Hi, I'm Eric. Um, I just finished a ghost trap. It's in a relatively pristine state. And I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you how to weather it to give it more of a metallic feel. Before we get started, here are a few before shots. As you can see, the trap is clean and looks fresh from the factory showroom. Any version of a metallic paint will work for weathering. For this demonstration, I'm using steel, but I've also had success with silver and chrome. I'm primarily using the dry brush method to apply wear to this prop. Just keep wiping the brush onto a dry surface until the paint comes off in small, dry patches. If the brush is dry enough, when you start applying the paint, you'll know immediately that this is correct. The hardest part of starting is the fear of ruining a pristine looking prop. Don't worry about it. Take the leap and see where it takes you. To start, work on a small, relatively inconspicuous part of your prop. Remember to work in small chunks using short strokes. As you get a feel for the technique, you should be able to work a little faster and more aggressively. It doesn't really matter what type of brush you use. I use pretty low quality ones. Um, I actually borrow them from my kids' 99 cent watercolor sets and either clean them and put them back or just throw them away. Short brush strokes will look more like paint scrapes. You don't need to apply this technique across an entire edge. If you leave gaps of pristine paint, it will look more natural. Remember to take your time and to check the overall look of your prop. If you become too tunnel focused, you may find an isolated part does not mesh well with the overall appearance. For the handle, I'm going to use what I call the rub technique. Essentially, start applying a much larger bit of paint than you would normally use and smear it on with the brush. After application, use your finger to rub and spread the paint evenly. Make sure you do not allow your finger to stop moving or you may end up with a fingerprint in the middle of your smear. You'll need to work relatively quickly when you're doing the rub method because the paint may dry very quickly. I suggest if you're planning on using the rub method a lot, you should wear vinyl or latex gloves unless you enjoy walking around with paint stains on your hands for a few days. On corners or more prominent protrusions, go a little heavier on the paint and don't be afraid to use the rub technique. You want your weathering to reflect what people see on everyday objects. Wear will naturally occur more heavily on parts that get heavy contact from other objects or people. There are two approaches you can take to weathering, in my opinion. One for pictures and close-up use, and another for costumes or conditions where the item is seen from a distance. For close-up work, you probably want the weathering to be subtle. If you get too aggressive, it will appear over the top and unrealistic. For props that are seen from a little further away, it makes sense to be more aggressive because subtle work is going to get lost and you're mostly going to lose the effect that you're looking for. Make sure you vary the pressure you're applying to your brush to ensure that you're getting lots of different effects and nuance. More pressure will result in a more of a chipped look. Light pressure appears as a scratch. Notice that I don't always do a hard blend when applying the rub method. Again, you want lots of variation. If your technique looks too uniform, it will not appear natural. You'll notice that I will allow the brush to slide across a hard edge. This leaves a very thin line of paint that helps bring out the edge of the object. If you want a prop to show more subtle signs of wear, you could probably use this technique exclusively. There are lots of ways to create scratches. For the purposes of this video, I'm just using the paintbrush. A surefire way to create convincing scratches and surface damage is to dip a toothpick into your paint and then use the wet end to draw lines on your prop. Remember to use very little paint and keep your scratches mostly straight. Swoopy or curvy scratches may not appear convincing. A tip, if you roll the toothpick in your fingers as you pull the toothpick along the surface of the prop, you'll get a very jagged looking scratch. Make sure you do practice that technique before applying it to one of your pieces. It doesn't show well in this video, but I've applied other colors to the prop to create the impression of wear. If you look closely, you'll see I've applied gold scratches and rubs to the silver portions of the prop to give the appearance that the chrome plating has been damaged. I've also smeared black paint on the trap to represent oil, dirt, and grime. 
Inevitably, when you weather an object, you're going to have an oops moment. Whether it's the application of too much paint or an unintended smear, don't worry about it. And don't try and fix it right away. Finish what you're weathering and then look at the prop again. You may find that your mistake turns into one of your favorite parts. I started adding big wear marks on my prop handles after I dripped paint on the grip and then attempted to wipe it off with my thumb. Voila, instant smear. Once you get into a groove, you'll find that weathering an object can be done fairly quickly, but don't try and rush. Keep checking your work to make sure you haven't missed a section. Several times on this prop I thought I'd finished only to find an edge or two that I'd missed. Overall, I was able to weather this trap in about 30 minutes. As a personal preference, I like putting a lot of wear on corners. To me, it makes an object look like it's really been rough treated. But, make sure you find your own style. Experiment. The more I apply weathering techniques to props, the more I notice how objects wear in every day. Next time you're in a grocery store, notice how the handles of the doors and the shopping carts are chipped and worn. The funny thing is, as you work on your prop, you'll stop seeing your individual brush strokes and start to buy into the illusion that you're creating. It's a little like looking at a cube drawn on a sheet of paper. You know it's a flat surface, but your brain eventually starts to recognize the visual cues in the drawing and interprets them as 3D. It's the same here. You know you're just applying paint, but eventually your brain recognizes chips and surface damage, and so that's what it becomes. That about does it for this prop. If you're interested in seeing additional videos using different weathering techniques, please leave a comment below. And if you've weathered a prop, post a video and I'll put it as a response to this one. We'll close out this video with some shots of the finished ghost trap. Thanks for watching.